the maximum degree of one and one of one. So this number is actually responsible for the dynamic. For the volatile dilemma, we know that the benefit of uh, the payoff of correlator is aligned this way, and the benefit of sorry, <laughs> sorry, the defector payoff is aligned flat uh, in flat line. Yeah, yeah. So in that case, we, we cannot align those payoffs in line, but we need a uh, close uh, the degree two curve, okay, the parabola. So this game has more higher nonlinearity in that, uh, than that. And this degree, defined as the maximal degree of the polynomial, is actually responsible for how, how high genetic association we need. We can prove, uh, uh, we can formally prove that the degree D game requires D plus one tuple genetic association. So if we try to understand the public good game, that's a linear game for degree one. So that means we need the two tuple genetic association, that is relatedness. But for the Volantia's dilemma, three person Volantia's dilemma, that was degree two. So we need to triplet association. So that study can, can uh, elucidate what game can be described by association, relatedness, and what game are not. Okay, so. Sorry for running out of my time. And the take home message is, is this. First, a technical remark. If you want to study any player interaction, then the theta matrix describes each genetic structure. And the second one is more intuitive. The higher and highly nonlinear game requires higher order genetic numbers. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you for Dr. Otsuke's impressive talk. Now is the time for questions. Questions? Okay, thanks for your wonderful presentations. And you consider the assortment from the uh, random case. Uh, I think it's very interesting. But I, I, I want to know uh, what do you think of the effects of the population structure on the evolutionary dynamics? Since I'm considering the case, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much. Well, uh, this there is no perfect overlap between my study and the structured cooperation one, but the similarity is that the cooperation structure can generally uh, can generally achieve the assortment, uh, even the individuals. Do not, in, do not intend to do so. Because in a structured operation, the kin or relatives are likely to be passed up. Okay? Yeah. So this is the similarity. And the, uh, the, the difference is that I assume a convicted, well mixed operation. So the competition is completely global. But in a structured operation, if, if you consider, for example, an island, Sometimes the reproductive competition occurs within an island, not as a global thing. And in that case, the evolutionary dynamics are very much different. Okay. Yeah, just one quick question uh, in, on the <coughs> invitation for comment. The quick question is in spatial um, correlations, the higher order correlations are very much uh, diffused by noise, so mm -hmm. to see higher order correlations is often not possible in, in finite systems, and, and they also become irrelevant dynamically. Is it so that here the higher order correlations really matter for the dynamics and the noise? Ah, that's a good question. Thank you very much. Yeah, I agree that uh, in a spatial setting, the higher order correlation, like you know, third order, fourth order, uh, very really uh, so probably only the calculation is important. And in that case, it's probably not necessarily the case because if you consider, for example, the full seal, then the, then those full seals, uh, if you, even if there are 10 full seals, the probability of they sharing the common ancestor is very high. Uh, if they share a mother and father, then they share only two common ancestors or one common ancestor, either case. So probably in such a setting, full seed 
an interaction that are different would be much bigger. I think. Right. Basically, we establish an intergeneration because of the such a full sync. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just bring it to the sun. No, it's not invitation for a You know the storm that was caused by the Tanita Nova. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we all uh, felt the waves of that. Um, you said that the interpretation inclusive fitness theory was not possible for the non linear uh -huh. games. Uh -huh. Would you like to comment on what uh, those authors claim to be the rise and fall of inclusive fitness theory? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that opportunity. And uh, yeah, uh, the, probably, the dif probably the difference in the modeling uh, difference in the modeling style causes this kind of storm. That that is, I think, one of the reasons. And we evolutionary game theorists use the usually use the discrete strategy like population or detection. In that case, such higher uh, order genetic associations is inevitable, as my, as my slide shows. But uh, some population genetics based uh, researchers use a uh, uh, continuous strategy such as uh, uh, unique strategy like 60% population, 40% population, and they study the gradual uh, evolution of that population percentage. And in that case, we can and they can formally prove that only the characterization matters because, because the, in a continuous space, uh, in, in a continuous space, everything can be, well, it's very technical, but everything can be uh, approximated by the smoothness characteristics. But in that case, as you see for the Volant Volantia space dilemma, the payoff suddenly arises. So I think that difference could, could, is causing, is one, of the, one of the reasons the storm is that difference in modeling. <laughs> I think because uh, we have the line, uh, time limit, so we can have the last question. Okay, thanks for an interesting talk. Uh, I have just a quick comment uh, on this uh, so with regard to, to the degree one, you know, if, if you have a linear topic, um, I just want to mention that in this case, it's actually an n first and probably third space, it's the same as n minus one to n minus one. And so that might be or might provide another reason why it's why it's uh related in fact uh, uh, the, the question I, I have is is related to your motivation. Um, and that's when you introduce the nepotism. Mm -hmm. it's, um, so basically you need to think differently towards your relatives than you can think towards others. Mm -hmm. So you, you have some kind of conditional strategy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's my ongoing and future work. And uh, this work doesn't consider that such a conditional behavior depending on both depending on the relatedness, you know. Closer relatives like for brain and uh, stranger like effect, but this kind of behavior is not modeled in this one. So I have to <laughs> consider that kind of possibility in the uh, near future because uh, uh, the you know going back to my motivation, the animals behave in that way, like conditional way. But I have a rough idea, but not not yeah, not a fixed idea yet. Thank you very much. For that. Let's uh, thank uh, Hitachi again. And uh, if you have more, uh, if you have more.